I'm joined now by Jeff Nathanson, who is Managing Director of Whistle Sports. Jeff, thanks for joining us today. Um, tell me more about Whistle Sports, because it's not what you might call the, uh, the traditional uh, sports broadcast company. No, we're definitely not. We're definitely not. We're, we're a very strange and unique and bizarre organization. Um, Whistle Sports is basically a social and digital studio. We create content around the world of sport involving social influencers, professional uh, athletes, teams and clubs, and we put it all together. And we're trying to create what would be sports content for the next generation of sports fans. It's a little different than, say, the way that I would naturally consume sports. There's a little, there, it's primarily through social platforms. It's telling weird and strange stories in ways that young people engage with it. It's the way that you see a 15-year-old looking and glued to their mobile phone, mm. watching a funny, fi funny video, mm. and putting messages in there and, and sharing it with their friends. So breaking the mold in a way, it's not just the um, sports, it's not just the activity and the event itself. It's far more around it. Well, we're all, as sports fans, I mean, we are always sports fans. We don't stop thinking about sports just when the event is over. Mm. You know, the thing is, is one of our mottos is uh, 90 minutes is never enough. The football match ends, and we want to talk about it. We want to see that. We want to get to know the athletes behind the scenes. We want to part we're participants ourselves, and we want to share what we're doing in the world of sport, either as a participant or an observer. And so we're trying to harness that energy around sports that isn't tied to the actual live sporting event itself, because that's just one component of what fandom is nowadays. Do you consider the, the, the technology of the delivery of the content? I mean, we're here at Mobile World Congress, there's a mobile focus, obviously. Do, do you consider when you're producing the content that, that the, the consumption might be on portable devices and the transmission's going to be across networks? We, we, think, we, think, we think that all the consumption is going to be on mobile networks. I don't know if anyone sat next to a 15-year-old on a sofa while a sports event's on, try to get them away from looking at the mobile screen. Mm. The, I, we, have this, we have this rule in the office, anytime anyone hears the word second screen, they have to put like a pound in the kitty jar. <laughs> because it is, the, the second screen is the one furthest away from your nose, yeah. right? Yeah. And the fact is, is all the content's gonna be consumed on mobile. And when, until people start to recognize that this is a primary viewing device and not a secondary viewing device, they're gonna be stunted by the way that they approach their di distribution. And it's, 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 to me, it's just a massive change. We've seen this over a period of time when I, I worked at YouTube where a very small component of the overall viewership was on mobile to the vast majority of the content is on the mobile device right now. And now it's slowly coming back to the TV, but through things like Chromecast and Apple TV, et cetera. Yeah. But it, the device is the phone, which is the way you discover the content, the way you interact with the content, and ultimately the way you cast the content. So everything goes through the mobile and everybody should be thinking about the mobile as a primary device. So how much how much do you focus on on the I guess the the technology um, as opposed to the actual individual and you could, you know it, are we talking like a, a, a more of a specific age range of people who are consuming content this way? We we focus on the creative and we use the data to help shape the creative. We depend on other people's technologies, other people's platforms. We don't try and become we're not a technology solutions company in any shape or form. We're really about creative storytelling around sports, but using the technology that's available in ways that never that people never thought possible. The fact that you can live stream in high definition from your mobile phone with a pretty good lens means that you have ability for immediate international distribution and you don't need to have a live truck pull up to a situation to any number of live events. Mm -hmm. So you have all these different technological solutions and we are trying to find the ones that get most get a higher level of resonance with the audience. And we're looking at young audiences. We're thinking 13 to 24 year olds. These are people that are not cord cutters. They're, they've never had the cord. Mm -hmm. They've never known a world where social media does not exist, where they cannot comment and interact directly with their heroes who are sporting heroes or e-gaming heroes or any number of individuals. They feel that they themselves are creators in this space and have something to say and contribute. And so their perspective is totally different than the way that I grew up consuming sports and, and, and getting excited about sports. And once you start looking through the lens of the 14 to 15 year old mm -hmm. and their mobile phone, your perspective on where the sports industry as a whole will undergo a massive, massive change. Mm. I mean, my generation, we, we were brought up on, on, a, on a limited diet of sports. It was a select number of sports that got the televised coverage. Um, what, what are they, what's, what's the range available now? Could, well, uh, it's just a, a much, much wider. Well, so what, what I think is really important to keep in mind is, is, is now we grew up with terrestrial television with a limited amount of sport mm -hmm. coming through a very small number of channels. And then we had the revolution of cable and digital, which brought us every kind of sport live streaming possible. Well, now with what is basically infinite selection in terms of entertainment right now, what do you do to cut through? And what we talk about often 
is community. Mm -hmm. And community around a club or community around a specific sport or community around a specific creator or influencer in this space. And once you recognize that you have to take the time to have a relationship with your audience, as most social influencers recognize, you will then be able to start to create the content that will resonate from them. We have come from a world where the broadcast world, which is the one to many, and live sports where you must watch at this appointed time to experience this, to a world where you have to go out there and fight for your audience. You can't take for granted the constriction in the supply channel. It, you can't take that for granted as giving you and generating you audience. Where you are in the EPG is not necessarily where you're going to be on social media. So you really have to go out there and understand your audience and be willing to talk to your audience. I love talking to organizations that sit there and say, I say, well, when's the last time you posted a comment on your Instagram feed or responded to someone's comment on your YouTube channel? They're like, well, we don't do that. We're the sports federation or we're the broadcaster, which I'm like, which is the wrong answer. The correct answer is every fan that takes the time to comment is worthy of your time and effort and finding some way to develop that relationship. And when you pay attention to them, they will pay greater attention to you. But it requires a complete total shift in the mentality of like, here I am, I'm the director of this event, I'm the programmer, and you are going to watch what I put out there. It doesn't work anymore. I guess also we've moved from um, passive consumption of, of this content to, you know, thanks to these devices, we can actually engage and, and have that interaction. And create and mm. become stars in our own. Our biggest mm. creators who are part of our studio are Dude Perfect, and they're perhaps the most viewed channel on YouTube. And these guys were five friends from Texas who basically went out there and did a couple of trick shot, basketball trick shots. They are the biggest influencers in sports on social media right now bigger than I would say they have a higher level of engagement and viewership than most of the major football and clubs, et cetera. And I would say this, and if you go look at their channel, we put out a video this past week with them and another influencer group from our, our, our network called uh, the F2, and the video's got nearly 15 million views over a period of a week, 16 million views now. And you compare that to the viewership on these social platforms of some of the more traditional brands, and you're like, oh wait, something is very, very different here because neither the dudes nor the F2 have ever played professional sport, but er their fan base thinks that they're some of the best, greatest sports people on the planet. Which brings us to this show, Mobile World Congress. You can't move without coming across 5G. What's your expectations of 5G and what it might do for you and your industry? I think 5G will be provide us where the phone is already, in all, for all intents and purposes, our studio. You don't need much more than a phone right now mm -hmm. to stream live from anywhere on the planet. And I, you know, and I think it's really, really amazing the way that, you know, in the old day when I worked in television, we have, you'd have you know, all these big cameras and you'd have your director's booth and you'd have the edit facilities and all, you know, and I would remember arriving at trade fairs like this and offloading 12 hard mm -hmm. shell cases. Mm -hmm. And that wasn't even for a live event, that was just to cover the event. And now everything is self-contained in the mobile phone. So basically our creators will be able to provide high definition live streaming from anywhere in the world when they use 5G, including other types of video functionality, et cetera. And they'll be able to move readily into creating AR, VR type content themselves through the, through the innovations. So I think what people have to recognize is the traditional broadcast space is going to find increasing competition from individuals who are creative and have amazing personalities and stories to tell and now have more technology packed into their phone than these um, traditional television people would have had in the 1990s. And so you have to look at it from their perspective. Our, our influencer creators will be everywhere there where there's something interesting to cover and they will be streaming live from there. Great, well Jeff, terrific insights and uh, very nice to meet you. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you for having me.